a Wikivide Documentaries production. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy. Trump Tower Trump Tower is a 58-story, 664-feet mixed-use skyscraper at 721 725 Fifth Avenue between 56th and 57th Streets in Midtown Manhattan, New York City. Trump Tower serves as the headquarters for the Trump Organization. Additionally, it houses the penthouse condominium residence of the building's namesake and developer, U.S. President Donald Trump who was a businessman and real estate developer when the tower was developed. Several members of the Trump family also live, or have resided, in the building. The tower stands on a plot where the flagship store of department store chain Bonwitella was formerly located. Dare Scott, of Poor, Swank, Hayden and Connell designed Trump Tower, and Trump and the Equitable Life Assurance Company developed it. Although it is in one of Midtown Manhattan's special zoning districts, the tower was approved because it was to be built as a mixed-use development. Trump was permitted to add more stories to the tower, because of the atrium on the ground floor. There were controversies during construction, including the destruction of historically important sculptures from the Bon Teller store, Trump's alleged underpaying of contractors, and a lawsuit that Trump filed, because the tower was not tax-exempt. Construction on the building began in 1979. The atrium, apartments, offices, and stores opened on a staggered schedule from February to November 1983. At first, there were few tenants willing to move into the commercial and retail spaces. The residential units were sold out within months of opening. Since 2016, the tower has seen a large surge in visitation, because of Trump's 2016 presidential campaign and subsequent election. Both his 2016 and 2020 campaigns are headquartered in the tower. Context. Donald Trump, a prominent New York City real estate developer, had envisioned building a tower at 56th Street and 5th Avenue since childhood. But he only formulated plans to develop the site in the mid-1970s, when he was in his 30s. At the time, the Bonwit Teller flagship store, an architecturally renowned building built in 1929, occupied the lot. The site was next to Tiffany's flagship store on 57th Street which Trump considered the city's best real estate property. Approximately twice every year, Trump contacted Bonwit Teller's parent company, Genesco, to ask whether they were willing to sell Bonwit Teller's flagship store. Trump said the first time he contacted Genesco, they literally laughed at me. Genesco continued to decline his offers and, according to Trump, they thought I was kidding. In 1977, John Hannigan became the new chairman of Genesco. He looked to sell off some assets to pay debts, and Trump approached him with an offer to buy the Bonwit Teller building. In February 1979, Genesco sold off many of the Bonwit Teller locations to Allied stores, and sold the brand's flagship building to the Trump Organization. At the time, the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States owned the land, while Genesco had a long-term lease on the land with 29 years remaining. If Trump were to buy the land, his tower's ownership could be transferred to Equitable in 2008, once the lease expired. Equitable initially refused to sell the land to Trump, but the Trump Organization bought the lease instead, and Equitable donated the land in return for a 50% stake in the construction project itself. This was more profitable for Equitable, since they were only getting $100,000 per year from Genesco for the use of the land, while a single condominium in the tower could make millions of dollars. Trump also bought the air rights around Tiffany's flagship store to prevent another developer from tearing down the store and building a taller building. Trump then needed to convince the New York City Department of City Planning, Manhattan Community Board 5 and the New York City Board of Estimate to rezone the area for his planned tower. In 1979, the New York Committee for a Balanced Building Boom had opposed the planned rezoning over fears Fifth Avenue's character would be changed by the construction of skyscrapers. Trump later said that a positive review of the building by the famed architectural critic Ada Louise Huxtable had played a part in securing the support of some of the more skeptical members on each committee. The deal attracted some criticism from the media. 
A writer for New York Magazine said that the approval of Trump Tower has legitimized a pushy kid nobody took seriously, while the Wall Street Journal wrote that Trump combined a huckster's flair for hyperbole with a shrewd business and political sense, and the Village Voice said that Trump turn s political connections into private profits at public expense. Planning The Trump Organization closed Bonwit Teller's flagship store in May 1979 and the store was demolished by 1980. Trump hired Descott, the architect of Trump Tower, in July 1978, a year before the Bonwit Teller site was purchased. Scott had collaborated with Trump before to develop Grand Hyatt New York and several other projects. The architect initially proposed a design similar to Boston's John Hancock Tower, but Trump objected strongly. He preferred a building that was both very tall and expensive, with a design that critics and potential tenants would approve of. The real estate mogul later stated that, the marble in Trump Tower would cost more than the entire rent from one of my buildings in Brooklyn. Two major factors affected Trump Tower's construction. One was the decision to build it around a concrete frame, in contrast to many other skyscrapers, which were built on steel frames. Scott said that a concrete frame was easier to build and was more rigid than a steel frame was. The other was the decision to design Trump Tower as a mixed-use building with retail, office, and residential units. Originally, Trump only wanted to build an office building on the site, but the plot was located in a special zoning district, which specified height limits for most office towers in the area. However, mixed-use towers with public space were exempt from the height limit. The Trump Organization built a five-story, 15,000 FT2 atrium, which was legally designated a public space, according to city code, in exchange for permission to add 20 stories to the planned tower. The Trump Organization also constructed terraces on the building's setbacks, as well as a pedestrian arcade at ground level through the middle of the block, which connected to IBM's 590 Madison Avenue Tower to the east. At the time, the building was the only skyscraper on Fifth Avenue with its own retail space. As originally planned, the tower was to have 60 stories consisting of 13 office floors, 40 condominium floors, and two floors for mechanical uses, but this was later amended. The base was to be made of limestone, while the building's elevators were to be in a separate glass structure outside the main tower. In the final plan, the building was to contain 58 stories. The lowest six floors would be occupied by the atrium, followed by 13 office floors above it, and 39 condominium floors above the office floors. While creating the final design for Trump Tower, Scott studied the designs of other skyscrapers, almost all having a similar architectural form. To make Trump Tower stand out from the boxy, international-style buildings being erected at the time, Scott designed the tower as a 28-faced edifice with an inverted pyramid of cubes at the base. This design received mixed reviews from critics, although it was widely praised as creative. Many reviewers also believed the tower could be covered in masonry to blend in with neighboring buildings, or that its height should be reduced, for the same reason. The city ultimately accepted this design. Construction HRH Construction was hired as the contractor on Trump Tower. The company would go on to build many of Trump's other real estate developments. HRH hired several dozen subcontractors to work on different aspects of the building. Barbara Rees, who had worked on some of Trump's other projects, was hired as the construction executive in October 1980. She had previously worked for HRH Construction during the building of the City Group Center and the Grand Hyatt. Rees was the first woman assigned to oversee a major New York City construction site. She was often ignored by subcontractors and suppliers who were new to the project, as they thought the person in charge of construction was a man. The head superintendent of the project was Anthony, Tony Raff, Raff Aniello, who worked for HRH Construction. He was in charge of coordinating construction based on the site's blueprints. Raff Aniello was supported by five assistant superintendents, including Jeff Doinau who was one of the first concrete supervisors to be hired for the construction of a skyscraper. After Rafaniello was hired for the Trump Tower project in September 1980, 
he spent a week planning a three-phased construction schedule. Once the subcontractors were hired, Raffaniello made sure they met once a week and sure they were working on the same phase. Trump Towers proposed mixed-use status posed obstacles during construction since there were different regulations for residential, commercial, and retail spaces. Several prospective commercial and residential tenants requested custom-made features, including the installation of a swimming pool for one unit, and the removal of a wall with utilities inside it for another. Trump's then-wife, Ivana Trump, was involved in selecting some of the tower's minor details. Donald Trump and Rees agreed to fulfill many of these requests, but they did not always agree on matters of design. In one case, Trump so hating the marble slabs, at some of the tower's corners that he demanded they be removed completely, even at great cost. He eventually decided that bronze panels should be placed over the marble, but Rees later said she refused to buy them. Trump Tower was also the first skyscraper with a concrete frame, and so the contractors had to complete the floor before they started erecting the floor above it. Concrete was more expensive in New York City than anywhere else in the United States which raised the construction costs. All of the floors above the 20th used a roughly similar design, and each of these floors could be completed within two days. However, the floors below the 20th floor were all different, so each took several weeks to erect. Trump Tower was topped out by July 1982, two and a half years after the start of construction. Originally, it was estimated the tower would cost $100 million to build, the total cost ended up being approximately twice that. This included $125 million in actual construction costs and $75 million for other expenditures such as insurance. Incidents Trump Tower had a low number of worker fatalities during construction. One worker died during the tower's excavation after a neighboring sidewalk collapsed. Another incident occurred. When the tower's 25th through 27th floors accidentally caught fire, slightly damaging a construction crane, firefighters had to rescue the crane's operator. The fire delayed construction for two months. In May 1983, a glass window pane fell from a crane installing windows on the tower, hitting two pedestrians. One of them later died from a skull fracture. Destruction of Bonn with Telebuilding Features the art dealer Robert Miller owned a gallery across Fifth Avenue from the Bon Teller building. When Miller heard the building was to be demolished, he contacted Penelope Hunter Stiebel, a curator at the Metropolitan Museum of Art. In December 1979, Stiebel and Trump agreed that the Art Deco limestone bas relief sculptures of semi nude goddesses on the Bon Teller building's facade, as well as the massive ornate 15 by grill above the store's entrance would be removed and donated to the Metropolitan Museum. Miller had appraised the sculptures at between $200,000 and $250,000. In February 1980, Trump wrote a letter to an official at the museum, in which he stated, Our contractor plans to begin demolition on the exterior of the building in approximately three to four weeks. He has been instructed to save these artifacts and take all necessary measures to preserve them. Every week, the Trump Organization and Stiebel would meet to discuss the transport of the sculptures. However, Stiebel later said the Trump Organization never seemed to be able to agree on a specific date for their transport, and the organization had repeatedly dismissed her concerns about not having received the letter. On April 16, 1980, the grill and sculptures were removed from the building. They were set to be transported to a junkyard and destroyed because, according to Trump, there were general hazard concerns expense, and a possible 10-day construction delay due to the difficulty of removing them. Stiebel rode by taxicab to the building site and attempted to pay the workman for the sculptures, but she was rebuffed. The workers in charge of demolition told her that she could make an appointment to go see the sculptures, but they then cancelled several appointments that Stiebel made. The workers later told her that the building's decorative grill had been transported to a New Jersey warehouse, but it was never recovered, and on May 28, Stiebel was informed the grill had been lost. On June 5, the sculptures were destroyed. Stiebel had received notice of the sculptures pending demolition, but by the time she reached the Trump Tower site, the workmen told her that they had been ordered to destroy it all. Trump later acknowledged he had personally ordered the destruction of the sculptures and grill. 
Trump said that these so-called Art Deco sculptures, which were garbage by the way, had been informally appraised by three different individuals as not valuable, and they had pegged the sculptures' value at $4,000 to $5,000. He also told the media that carefully removing the sculptures would have cost him an extra $500,000 and would have delayed his project. In a New York Magazine article in November 1980, Trump said that the decor of his Grand Hyatt New York included, real art, not like the junk I destroyed at Bonwichella. The New York Times condemned Trump's actions as, aesthetic vandalism, and a spokesman, for Mayor Ed Koch said Trump had failed his, moral responsibility to consider the interests of the people of the city. Scott was outraged, by the destruction, having initially hoped to incorporate the goddess sculptures into the new building's lobby design. Trump had rejected the plan preferring something more contemporary. Miller lamented that such things would never be made again, and Peter M. Warner, a researcher who worked across the street, called the destruction regrettable. However, Trump later said he used the notoriety of that act to advertise more residential units in the tower. Brought to you by Wikividi Documentaries Would you like to know more?